Shana Bukhari was born and brought up a Muslim. I believe in my religion. Being modern doesn't mean I don't believe in God. But she doesn't regularly practice her Muslim faith. She loves all the freedoms her Western life allows. In fact, she's a model. In total contrast, she'll be meeting converts who try to follow Islamic guidelines in everything they do. I want to know why women are converting to Islam. So I'm going to go and meet five converts and try to understand why they've converted to a new religion. Next, Shanna's travelling up to Scotland. She wants to meet a convert who's been practising Islam for a while. Elana converted over two years ago. She's 20 and lives in Glasgow. She's a media student. But what's most important in her life is her faith, Islam. I'm a traveller, so I'm from the fairground and get Scottish and English travellers and not gypsies, a completely different thing. And um, I grew up on a caravan site. And that's my wee caravan, wee car hut. And I live right across my mum and dad. So if I don't feel like cooking, she feeds me. <laughs> Alana was brought up a Protestant and was baptised as a baby. But her conversion to Islam hasn't always been easy. It's really hard for me because, especially we're living in the east end of Glasgow, and there's no Muslims here, and there's such a white Scottish. There's hard, you know, why? Why do you think? How old? Why would you want to be, choose to be a Muslim? And I feel as if I need to be extra polite for them to know that I'm human, that I'm, you know, Scottish. You know, because I feel like they, they think I'm going to do something to them. They've got that look. Shanna's come to meet Alana to find out if it was hard to leave her old life behind. Come on in. Were you into like all that stuff, partying, clubbing? Well, I did go out quite a lot mm -hmm. when I was younger and as of like did you used to drink oh uh -huh, yeah mm -hmm. used to drink and go out mm -hmm. and then I would go out not drink but still go out to the clubs and then now it's not going out to the clubs and not drinking at all it's more been a, a change for my friends to be honest ah. adapting to find why is she not going what out what they like it just well the first you know the typical thing they say is uh, you don't have to drink but still come out right you know you can mm -hmm. be the taxi driver you know but, um, which was fine. Mm -hmm. And then the more I was like, no, this is defeating the purpose. What has been the biggest right. thing you have had to give up? I love Parma ham. Oh. Love it, the salt and wrap it in mail and it's just beautiful. Um, so that was the hardest yeah, thing. Yeah, I think that, and I think, you know, I'm known for walking at a Tesco with like just a packet of Parma ham and just eating oh. it just <laughs> as it is. And that, I think that has been the hardest thing. And that's what my cousin says to me, how will you give up Parma ham, you know? And I'm like, yeah, no. But it's by chance that Alana encountered Islam. When she first left college two and a half years ago, she set out for Lanzarote, hoping to become a club rep. When you're 18, it's the whole, oh, you need to go out and live your life while you're young and you need to go and do all the things you're going to regret. And I was like, right, I want to go out and do everything that I'm going to regret. I want to have a crazy six months, just get absolutely mental drunk, just go out, do what I want to do and have a brilliant time and come back and then work. And that just didn't happen. What did happen is she met her fiancé, Abdul. He introduced her to Islam, and now they're planning to get married. I have to have an um, Islamic wedding and a British wedding, but I think I would try to make it a bit more like a British wedding for the sake of my dad, and my dad's one and only. Aww. So I think it would have the white and you know, yeah. the bridesmaids, just out of respect that mm. they, they, this is the only chance for me to do that, mm. you know. So I wouldn't like it to make it too you know, look too foreign. Yeah. <laughs> Would you let the guests so, get drunk on your wedding? I know, I think, um, <laughs> I know, I, I know, I know, what I mean is it is people's own choice to drink, but I think yeah. if they're coming to my wedding mm -hmm. and know that I'm a Muslim and my fiance, so they, they would have respect, I would write that, if, you, if you're not happy with that, don't come. Ooh. And I think if they love me enough and it's my family, yeah. then they should for that one day, I'm sure they could manage to not drink for the one night. But for Alana, the importance of Islam goes far beyond falling in love. It answers some of her big questions about life. I've always believed in God, that, well, there being something. It doesn't matter what you believe. I think we all deep down, if you, you, you must think, oh, when I die, I hope I go to a better place. You must, I mean, you can't be human and not think, oh, when I die, that's it, I don't care. Everyone must think, like, I want to go 
you know, some people with my relatives that have died or what, you must have that sort of feeling. Especially because I never got to meet my granny and granddad, I always think, well, what happens if they're actually in heaven? And if I don't get to go there, then it would just be terrible, you know, <laughs> so. But it still required courage for Alana to break the news to her family about her conversion. Just before um, Ramadan was when I told my family that I was a Muslim. I've been a Muslim for a while, but I didn't tell them. I was freaking out. Um, but I thought, if I'm going to do Ramadan, they're going to know that I'm not eating. So I had to tell them. Finished work. And I thought, right, I'm going to do it. So I went in, and all of a sudden, the adrenaline hit me. I started panicking and shaking. And I went in, and they could tell, my mum and dad, they could just tell, you know what I'm like. I went, I've got something to tell you, and I just burst out crying. Then my dad started to get annoyed because he's wanting to watch his programme. <laughs> so he's like, hurry up, hurry up, tell us what it is. And then my mum's starting to get worried. She went, you're pregnant. My dad's like, you've crashed your car. And I went, I burst out laughing then because then I was like, that's the worst thing that they could have thought was going to happen to me. And I was like, no, I actually want to be Muslim. And my dad's hurt straight out with, oh, I thought you already was a Muslim. And then I burst out laughing even more because I thought, well, I'm making such a big deal out of something that obviously they, you know, already knew, you know. Actually, it felt like I was telling some, like telling them I was gay or something like that. Oh, I was pregnant. That's what it felt like. Alana's determined to learn everything she can about her faith. She devotes her free time to studying and going to evening classes. Tonight, Shanna's come to join her at her weekly Islamic studies course. Okay. Even after like I became Muslim, I've studied a lot of books mm -hmm. and I've got them, read them all back to front. Oh, wow. And I've got that many and I just felt that, you know, I know the basics. Mm -hmm. Or well, I think I know the basics and I thought, well, I need something else. So I was told about a syllabus and mm -hmm. I applied for a scholarship and I got accepted. Uh -huh. now, but what I would like is to do this course um, and then I would like to study Arabic. Oh, wow. Because my fiancé, he's Arabic, mm -hmm. he speaks Arabic. Um, and if we have any children, inshallah, <laughs> then I would like to be speaking Arabic so I'm not getting talked about there talking <laughs> Arabic and I don't know what they're, what they're saying. Um, I would like that, and I would like to be able to read the Quran um, mm -hmm. in Arabic rather than just in English. I wouldn't feel as if I'm a proper Muslim in the future if I didn't speak some level of Arabic. It's really nice to see people actually go out their way to uh -huh. learn. At the class, the women sit behind the men, and following Islamic guidelines on modesty, they cover up, wearing hijab. But the lecture's been held up and Shanna soon finds out why. A course official's taken Alana to one side. To attend the lecture, Shanna needs to wear a headscarf. I'm having to wear a scarf because um, I didn't use my brains before I came here. Right, go on, yeah, I'll let you do it. I'll crop on laughing. I feel so self-conscious about it. Do you know what I mean? You're not used to wearing it. Yeah, it just... It's, do you know what it is? It's easier for women to wear less clothes than it is to put more on. <laughs> and it's also that thing... It's an intense course and there's lots to learn. Alana studies everything from Quranic history to Sharia law. That one. It's a term which many people uh, go about hear it all the time. The class is run by a charity who use a room at Glasgow University. So acting in obedience to God through a guiding light from God with the intention of seeking his pleasure. Shanna's shocked at the division between the sexes and the different expectations for men and women. Automatically when you go into a lecture hall, even though it's Islamic, I didn't think you need these things you need to be covered and I didn't even think about men. I didn't even think about the division of guys and women and where they're going to be sat. I just thought we're all treated equally. We're all going to be sat in one room. Having made a blunder last night, Alana's asked Shanna over to talk about how Muslim women ought to dress. Like many converts, Alana's interpretation of the dress code is strict. But not all Muslim girls are the same, particularly Shanna. Under Islam, haram means forbidden, and halal means allowed. Oh, I've actually halal, hal halalified my worship. <laughs> <laughs> How do you halalify your worship? Because, like, <laughs> <laughs> halalified. Halalified. And this is really nice. You'd probably like this. 
this is something like oh, I would wear. Oh, pretty. That would play my tights. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if I've got a top on and I've got like mm -hmm. this cotton underneath, I can still wear it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I've halal so that's halal fine. Halal fine, yeah. <laughs> that's my term that I've created. It's gorgeous, that. <laughs> <laughs> then my non-halal stuff, mm -hmm. which would be... Non-halal stuff. My non-halal stuff. You've got this division. Yeah, I have. I've separated all. So this would cover me, but it doesn't actually cover my bum. So I would know if oh, I was I wearing that. Hmm? No, oh my god, so that... So I would know that if I was wearing that, I'd have to wear a baggy or skirt. Ah. You know? That's but, uh, still baggy. Yeah, but it doesn't cover my bum. Fair enough. So, if I'm halalified, yes, that's... So I'm halalified right now, aren't I? Oh, your, your bum's covered. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're... you're oh never, I won't even go there, I won't even go there. <laughs> okay, I'm half halalified. <laughs> you're half halalified, yeah. I wore these to my cousin's wedding. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've kept all my good shoes, because I just love them. And I think you'd like these ones. These are the best ones. So I wouldn't wear these going out. Why? Because it's not part of the dress codes. Yeah, but so are you saying they're not halalified? No, they're not halalified. How can shoes possibly... Because you're walking and wiggling at the same time. <laughs> the, are these okay? Are these halalified? They were, but any higher than mm. that and I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear them. I Surely wouldn't. it's not against... Uh-huh. I've uh -huh. not heard of it. Let me hijabify you and see how oh good you look. <laughs> Honestly, go. Okay, here we go. At least it keeps you warm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, beautiful. Shall I put my hair up? <laughs> <laughs> Had a little look beautiful. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Take them unhalal boots off. <laughs> it's the most difficult thing to go out and be covered. You look beautiful though. <laughs> it's the first time Shan has come face to face with how strict Islam can be when it comes to rules on female dress. I look Muslim. Well, I don't even know what I feel. Mm -hmm. Transformed. Mm -hmm. You're covered. Yeah, it's, it's mm -hmm. not that I was naked and not covered before, well, do you know, know what that. I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just, um, I've got something baggy on me, mm -hmm. and then I've, I've got, you can't see my hair, mm -hmm. and um, I feel less pretty. Does that sound really bad? <laughs> well, the, the, the whole purpose of wearing hijab is so that you're not going out and drawing attention to yourself, so in a way it's working. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not ready for it, no. Shanna didn't expect to be criticised for the way she dresses. I don't mean to sound rude to the people who agree with Alana, but I totally disagree with that. That you can't wear high heels. And my boots were not halalified for her. I think she was looking at me thinking, I'm... She was seeing it as, I'm born into this religion as a Muslim, so I think she automatically thought, well, you should be practising and be doing what I'm doing if you're not already. And I've only been doing this for two years, and I think she was comparing and contrasting us quite a lot. I felt judged by her. I'm happy the way I am, um, and it doesn't it doesn't mean that I'm not Muslim because I'm not doing it. And just because I'm modern, that's got nothing to do with my religion. I will be I will be dying. I was born as a modern um, British Muslim, and I will die as a modern British Muslim. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. 